Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. Today I have a tabby cat for you. His name is Dex and that's short for Dexter and this is my friend Todd Velmer's cat and he allowed me to paint him. So I'm starting off wetting his whole body and putting in the lightest colors. So always working wet on wet initially is how I usually do my animals laying down the lightest colors that I see in the fur. My condolences to Todd. Dex recently passed away at the age of 16. He was a very friendly cat and he would sit on anybody's lap. And he also got along with Todd's dogs. And here's a cute pic of that. The colors that I used for the fur were uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, Van Dyke brown, and I also used sepia. Dex got his name from Dex Star, a character from DC Comics. So notice that you always want to start off with a very good reference sketch. In order to get the most successful painting, the more detailed your sketch is, the more lines that you have to follow, and you know where to put these darker colors. When doing an animal portrait, it's important to get their markings as close as you can from your reference photo. Otherwise, I'm just painting another tabby cat. So that's why I really make sure I do a good job of sketching out the reference photo and get all the markings, the dark areas where they need to be, and so forth. And it's crucial to get the eyes and uh, muzzle nose of an animal correct. So after putting in that first layer, everything's wet on wet, everything's very soft. I'm going back over his muzzle area and I'm lightening things up, making sure that I'm softening the edges there of uh, all those light areas. So there is a fleshy color around the eyes. So I'm getting that fle those fleshy colors in. For the fleshy part colors, I did use quinacridone scarlet. It's like my favorite color. And I usually mix it with some uh, browns a little bit to get this uh, fleshy tones. He's got quite a pink kind of fleshy nose. It's very adorable. So I'm laying down that first color. And you always want to paint in the direction that the hairs go. That's very important for everything to look realistic. So I'm spending a lot of time on those dark patches around his face that I see in the reference photo. And I am just slowly building up the darker mid-tones that, that I see in the reference photo. Remember, it's always safer to build up slowly than putting on too much paint because it's always harder to take away paint. I am using the Hunnamool collection series watercolor 140 pound cold press paper. It does lift a little easier than Arches watercolor paper. So now I'm starting to work on his eye and one thing I did with the reference photo was that I um, brought it into uh, one of my programs and adjusted um, the white balance and I also adjusted and hypersaturated the colors because the cat was washed out from him being backlit a little bit. So for me to find out what his true eye colors were and the color of his fur, um, I hypersaturated that and found out that there are a lot of colors in the eye. I was picking up um, some greens. I used cobalt green for the eye as well as yellow ochre because there's a lot of yellow in there. And then the ring around his eye had a lot of violet tones to it. So I did spend a, a lot of time on, on the eyes. If you don't get the eyes right, you might as well start your painting over because that's a very important feature. So with my lifting brush, I am lifting up those light areas in his muzzle. 
I know those light areas in his fur that I see. So <laughs> it's a lot of putting paint on and taking paint off. That is my go-to thing when I do paintings for animals. And you see how me lightening up that area around his eye just gave it a three-dimensional look. And now it looks like the socket is actually pushed back in the head a bit more. So it does have a lot more shape to it. And, you know, it's something very simple to do is just with a damp brush and, and lifting up colors like this. It just adds another dimension to your painting. Now I'm going to bring in some more of the uh, fleshy tones because his ears are pinker. And so I am wetting it first and then dropping in that color. That's called glazing. And that's the wonderful thing about watercolor is because it's a transparent medium, you can see all those beautiful brush strokes underneath. And you know, you're just ad adjusting um, the pigment of the painting. He's got a lot of pink around his mouth, and so that's what I'm working on there. He's got very defined uh, hairs around his whiskers, and I'm trying to get those dark areas in. And I don't want it to be too right in your face, and so I, I take my finger and I, I'm just smudging it, just kind of to lighten that color a little bit. Adding a little bit more detail in that nose getting the uh, shadows in there. Getting in the darker pink areas that I see and darkening up the ears more with my browns and a little bit of these burnt sienna. So now I'm going for the eyes, really working on that, bringing those flesh tones in there, outlining it, putting in that green, cobalt green, and dropping in the yellow ochre. Moving on to the other eye while that one's drying, and repeating the process with the fleshy tones, the browns, and adding the eye color into the right eye. Now the pupil, I used indigo. I thought that indigo would go nicely with the greens and the, the purple rim part of his eye. And it also makes a fantastic shadow because there's always going to be a shadow over the top part of their eye from, from the eyelid, from the sockets. Doesn't look purple, but I did use some violet in there because I did see that in the reference photo. And then there's little punches of, of aqua that I'm seeing, and so I'm just adding that in. And going on the other side and doing the same thing for that eye using the same colors. So yeah, I don't usually get too far into an animal painting without getting the eyes and the, the face basically uh, done.
pretty much first off because if you don't get the face right there, there's no use to even continuing so what I used there was my acrylic uh, white pen instead of using watercolor opaque white it's uh, very small and, and it lets me allows me to get in there to get those highlights in the eyes so I'm building up wet on dry now more of his coloring using very fine brush strokes getting all those little hairs in there Adding in all this brushwork is really bringing the cat up to life. He's looking really good. Another glaze on the ear. So now it's time to put a second layer on his body. So I am going to re-wet the whole thing and start dropping in the colors that I see. I used a lot of raw sienna and burnt umber. Burnt umber is really close to Van Dyke Brown. It's a really pretty warm brown. So your paper, you notice I'm touching the paper to see if it's still wet. If it feels cool, it's still wet and you can still lay down color. As I descend down the cat and onto his back and chest, I'm wetting as I go. Picking out a few more highlights on the face. As you darken up the body, it, you know, you have to make tonal adjustments. Now that's the raw sienna. His body is uh, kind of more ginger than his face is. I don't know if it's the lighting or if his face was uh, seems to be a little bit more lighter. So the stripes that I see on his fur, um, the darker areas, I am drawing those in. going darker with the shadow between his legs.
So now I'm taking a script liner brush and adding in all those little fine ed hairs ar around the edges of his fur just to give it a more realistic appearance. And the last thing I'm doing here is adding whiskers. He's got some white ones and some darker ones. I'm using Dr. Martin's watercolor white. Finishing off some of the shadows where his nose is. And there are some very fine white little hairs around the muzzle and I am drawing those in. always in the direction the fur is going. I'm darkening up his uh, stripes that I'm seeing in the reference photo. I didn't like the disconnected look that his face was just kind of too light for my taste and I really needed it to match the rest of his fur. So I put a light glaze of that golden color and it really tied the two together, I think. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you next week.